Hey Alex in Toronto, Canada. Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com and with the help of my GoPro camera I'm going to show you how I cut prescription lenses for your Ray-Ban 2132 New Wayfarer color 789 in the 55 eye size and of course the color 789 is the blue orange. Let's take everything out of its case. Of course you got somewhere hiding in here. It better be in here. Yeah that's it. Your Ray-Ban cleaning cloth which is backwards and upside down so I'll straighten that for you. Put that back inside the case. This is your frame as Ray-Ban sends it to me with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple. That's to prevent the temples from rubbing together and I will include all of the original packaging when I send it to you. Of course this frame comes with the blue gradient lenses which I'm going to go ahead and take out. These are the heavy glass original lenses that if you drop on the ground they will shatter or worse if you're hitting the eye and they crack it will slice your eye wide open. Instead I'm going to cut unbreakable bulletproof lenses to go in here. I'm going to take your Italian frame, put it into my Italian Santanelli. This is the LE1000 patternless edger and I'm going to trace one side of your frame here at freeprescriptionlenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed with quality. I'm going to pull the shape of your lens up onto the computer. I'm going to put in the width of your frame which happens to be 72 millimeters. So let me put that in right there. Your pupillary distance, I'm going to get your paperwork, 34 for the right eye, 34.5 for the left. So I'm going to put in 34 for the right eye, 34.5 for the left. These are polycarbonate lenses being cut for a Xyl frame, which is just an old school name for plastic. So let me go ahead and begin. I'm going to get your right lens. I need your paperwork again, which reads minus 5 and a quarter, minus 75 at 35. Minus five and a quarter, minus 75 at 35. I'm going to spin the axis wheel of my Marco 101 lensometer to 35. Take your lens out. I'm going to put the power drum on minus five and a quarter. Put your lens in there. Rotate it until the sphere power comes in clearly. Find the optical center. I'm going to check your astigmatism correction. And I'll explain all that in just a moment. It just means you squint. All right, so I've got three dots on your lenses that you can't see, so I'm going to darken them for you. And this is the right lens, so I'm going to put an R there. Do the same thing now for your left lens, which is simply a five and a quarter sphere. Put that in, find the optical center. And I only need one dot on your lens this time, since you have no astigmatism in your left eye. So you only squint with one eye. I'm going to put an L on there, which stands for not right, just like me. Now this is a block. This is what's going to... I call it Jenny from the block and it needs to be attached to your lens. So 3M, the same people who make post-it notes, make a double-sided adhesive sticker. Let me put the block in my blocker. The black side is the sticky side. I'm going to stick that on there first, pull the tape away. And what I'm looking at is essentially just like the crosshairs of a scope. I have a vertical meridian and a horizontal one. And I put those three dots on there because they need to, your, this has to be rotated just perfectly to fit into your frame. So I'm going to put those three dots on the horizontal meridian and then the vertical one is going to go straight through your optical center of the lens. Let me do the same thing now for your left eye. Grab one of these stickers, stick that on there, pull the tape away, get everything lined up perfectly and boom, we are there now again. So I'm going to take your right lens, put it into the chuck. Now I know from experience that the 55 has a deeper bevel than the 52 that I'm wearing so I'm going to take it down about half a millimeter now I'm hitting the start button and the first thing that's going to happen these calipers are going to come down and they're going to trace the shape of the right side of your frame to make sure this lens is large enough to fit always starting with the rear surface the concave surface closest to the eyelashes and then it's going to move forward and trace the convex front surface of the lens all the while measuring the thickness of the lens at every point going around to know exactly where to place the bevel so your lens fits best inside the frame. They can move the bevel front or back so it is mostly hidden. The actual cutting wheel is down here on the bottom left. That's going to grind your lens material away and this wheel in the center with that little valley is what's going to put the bevel on the lens so it'll stay inside the frame. I will have to close the door in a moment but I just want you to see as your lens touches down on the cutting wheel. Ooh, that's loud. So your lenses are made out of polycarb. Polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. It is virtually unbreakable and bulletproof up to 22 caliber. 
It also has both UVA and UVB protection built into it. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin, where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. So you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes. That UV protection is what's gonna offset or delay you getting cataracts late in life. Your lenses are also aspheric. It simply means not spherical. A spherical lens is completely round in every direction and gives you an ugly cosmetic fishbowl appearance. These lenses are going to be not only they thinner, but they're going to be much flatter. And it's going to fit inside the frame much better. Now, when you buy glasses from someone online, they charge you for plastic lenses. And if you want the thinner, lighter weight, unbreakable polycarbonate lenses, you have to pay an upgrade to that. And if you want the aspheric lenses, you have to pay another upgrade fee. So you have to pay for three lenses. Of course, from anyone else. You buy the frame from me and you will get three clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. If you have vision insurance or flex dollars and you want to wear something cool and funky, my receipt has my federal ID tax number on there so you can get reimbursed from your insurance company or health savings account flex dollars. Of course, that works here in America. I don't know what it's like in Canada. We have socialized health care and it might be free to begin with. Now, if you notice your lens is completely flat, just like a nickel, I could take it out now and it would stand up on the counter. If you also notice there's water running in the background, but polycarbonate cuts dry where plastic and high index cut wet. So no more flat edge. It's actually gonna go around now and cut the bevel onto the lens. Now for the very end of the cutting cycle, two water jets, one in the front and one in the back, are gonna spray water to try and wash any optical debris that may be on your lens. Kind of stuff that I'm pulling off. So this signals it's in its last 20 seconds of the, of the cycle, excuse me. I just ate some jalapenos and I've got the hiccups. I thought I was over the hiccups. That's my tell now. Whenever I eat spicy food, I start to get the hiccups. And I'm actually getting low on my, on my collection of hot sauces. I'm almost out of the Sriracha and I'm down to, I've got one bottle of Texas Pete Chipotle left. There's a pestilence on the land when I run out of hot sauce. So I'm going to take your lens out. And there's two things I want to do before I mount it in the frame. One is dry it off. And two, you have some rough edges here. The leftover from the cutting cycle. So I want to smooth those off. And I'm going to use my hand stone to do so. And it's completely flat. I can put my finger on it while it's running. And my finger gets warm due to the friction. But it's that friction that allows me to apply what's known as the safety bevel. And not only have I smoothed out those rough edges, I've literally just melted them. And this white powdery substance you see me scraping off is called Schwarf. And that concludes your vocabulary lesson of the day. But I do this so much, I've worn a V-shaped bevel into my thumbnail from scraping the edges of lenses. I'm just going to clean everything up here. And if all of it, what I just removed from your lens fell onto the counter, I carefully and neatly collect it into one pile. And then I wipe it on the floor. I do that because it makes people think that I've been working when they come over. Um, so let's go ahead and see if it fits into your frame. I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner and then using my thumbs, I press down at the nose and actually it does not pop in. It's still a little bit large. So I want to take it down in size. The golden rule, you can always take more off of a lens. You can never add it back on there. So I start a little bit large and work my way down. Now the 55 eye size, I'm sorry, the 52 eye size that I wear, it cuts perfect every time the larger 55 let me impose mine you see how mine's just a little bit smaller um, mine cuts true every time the 55 I usually have to take down a little bit just because it has a deeper bevel going all the way around than my 52 millimeter frame but you will be able to pop these lenses in and out and change the color of your frame which is what I do Today I happen to be wearing the blue rubber, which is color I can't see anymore, 811 I believe, because of my shirt. I always have my frames match my shirt color. When this color came out, I went out and bought two blue orange shirts just so I could rock this color. I love this one. Although, honestly, I keep my sunglass lenses in this one more than, than I wear it as clear lenses, but I still rock it. 
Perhaps you've heard of the Durham Bulls. Well, there was a movie years ago with Kevin Costner called Bull Durham. It was filmed here in my hometown about the local semi-pro baseball team. And these are their colors, so always make sure to have this frame in stock. And whenever I go to a baseball game, you can believe I'm wearing color 789. And this is Ray-Ban model number 2132, the new Wayfarer in color 789 in the 55 eye size. Hopefully my camera was good enough to pick that up. So again, draw your lens off. Back to the handstone real quick for the safety bevel. Scrape that off with my thumbnail. This time I'm just going to let it drop directly on the floor. I'm going to el eliminate the middleman, which is the counter. And let it just fall right on the floor. So, I tuck it into the outside corner and then using my thumbs, I press down at the nose and it actually snaps in this time. So I'm going to go ahead and start cutting your left. Flip that over to L and hit start. And the calipers are going to come down, but this time they're going to trace the shape of the left side of the frame to make sure the lens is large enough to fit. Always starting with the rear surface, the concave surface first, which is closest to the eyelashes. Then it will move forward and trace the convex front surface of the lens. Round and round. Camera one, camera two, camera one, camera two. And as soon as your left lens begins cutting, I will keep working on your right lens. So this block is no longer needed. I'm going to take it off. Let's pull that sticker off. Draw your lens and I'm going to put your lens into my lensometer and verify that it is at five and a quarter. Check your stigmatism correction. And we're getting minus six total power. Remember in high school algebra, you had two minuses together, but let me put it more realistic terms. If someone owed you $5.25 and then they borrowed another 75 cents, they would owe you $6. That's what we're getting, six diopters. Now the unit of measurement, I just mentioned diopter. You've heard of ounces, gallons, and pounds. The unit of measurement we use in the optical world is the diopter. It starts at zero and goes up in quarter increments. Zero is known as plano, better off known as non-prescription. So you need 21 steps of correction. It goes from 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, 1, and so on until we get to five and a quarter. That first number, you need 21 steps of correction for your myopia. Without your glasses on, you can see up close, but you need these for far away. So you are nearsighted. That corrects for your farsighted vision. Now. You need another three steps of correction for your astigmatism. Now there is a stigma over the word astigmatism. It just means shape. It's like saying that someone has straight hair, someone else has curly hair. That is it. It is not a disease. It is not an affliction. It fluctuates, it comes and goes. This first, without your glasses on, everything is much too large in real life. So when you put your glasses on, that minus sign, it will minify, which is the opposite of magnify. Your lenses will minify to the correct size. Now, you still have a little bit of fuzzy edges. Your astigmatism is what makes sixes and eights look alike, or the letters P and F. So, that's why you have a combined 24 steps of correction, combined power, where we get the minus six. Now, this 35, the, think of your astigmatism, the correction is the fine tune. We get everything the correct size. Now we have to take away those fuzzy edges. And a straight line is zero to 180. We're gonna turn that fine tune knob to about 35. So these first two boxes are real values. This number could be anywhere from zero to 180. Honestly, from one to 180, because zero and 180 are the same number. If you don't believe me, when I turn this little axle wheel, we've got 170, 175, and then it starts back again at zero. And hey, look, we got your frame here. So let me take that out. I think we're going to need it. Now this is your strongest lens. You have six diopters of full power and this is the larger eye size but you can see how your lens fits perfectly inside the frame. That's the thinner lighter weight polycarb plus the aspheric lenses where it's so much flatter it's not bulging outward. You have a beautiful finished cosmetic value. 
That's what happens when a licensed optician cuts lenses. Who's not trying to upsell you anything. In fact, we're not trying to sell you anything. You buy the frame and you get free prescription lenses. Thin, flat, free lenses. So let me scrape this off. And you know, my wife always complains about all this stuff on the floor, then I wipe it on the floor. So in her honor, I'm actually going to show you how far I have to walk to throw this away in the trash can. And you'll see why. I just wipe it on the floor. So I'm going to collect it into one pile. Now follow me. I'm going to wipe it into my hands. I mean, let's take this long walk to the trash can. I mean, who has time to go that far in the course of a work day? Wouldn't you agree with me? It's just easier to wipe it on the floor like that. So let's go ahead and get your lens mounted into the frame. Sorry, honey. I'm just messy. So I'm going to tuck it in here. And then using my thumbs, I press down at the nose. That's the problem with these really flat lenses. It wants to work its way back out. And then it pops in perfectly. So I'm going to take this block off. Pull that sticker off. Verify. Of course, there's no way I can, I can cut a spherical lens wrong, but we're reading minus five and a quarter. So that is cut perfectly. Your pupillary distance is 34 for your right eye, 34.5 for the left for a combined measurement of 68.5. I'm going to turn that over. I'm going to put my thumb on the right lens on the zero. I'm going to hold it up to the left lens. We're getting 68.5. So that is cut perfectly. And there's one more thing I want to do while I'm cleaning the dots off your lenses. And that's to remind everyone that if you get these in the mail and they're too loose or they're too tight or more realistically, one side is higher than the other. That's because 80% of people have one ear that's higher than the other. And because of that, that's why 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. So if you get these and they're not fitting perfect, just stop by your local optometrist's office and they'll get them adjusted for you for free. It only takes about 30 to 45 seconds for a proper adjustment to be, to be done. But I'm still going to get them in standard alignment, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set them on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. When I say wobble, I'm part of that 80%. I have one ear that's higher than the other. So when I press down on mine, they wobble on the counter, but they sit level on me. I flip them over, press down. There is no wobble. I close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly, and they do. And the same amount of tension on each hinge. Now, Alex in Toronto, calendar, Canada, forgive me, the... My, this video that I shot a couple days ago for, I think, Angel in Mexico City, that video had only been up for an hour when you saw this color and you said you just had to have this blue-orange. Well, there you go. You have it. If anyone else has any questions, you can email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. This frame does come in 15 colors. Tonight I'm wearing it in 811, which is the blue rubber. There's also a black rubber. There's a blue crystal, black crystal, and many, many more. But... Alex in Toronto, I hope you enjoyed watching me as I cut prescription lenses for your Ray-Ban 2132 new Wayfair in the color 789. And everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.